Writing is a very dynamic process because I never, well, this is just me personally, but I see it with many people, I never write only at the moment when I fully understand a problem. So I don't work on the problem and then when I have 100% comprehension, I say, okay, now I'm just going to write up that story and I know exactly what I'm going to write. Writing is, a, is, is part of this scientific discovery. I'm what you would call a computational engineer. So what I like doing is use mathematics and computer simulation to try to understand physical processes a little bit better. And uh, I'm particularly fond of uh, fluid flow processes. So anything that moves, I'd like to simulate and, uh, and see if I can help optimize designs for, say, tidal turbines or optimize production schemes for oil and gas reservoirs, because even though it seems very different than an ocean or a river, it's still stuff that flows, and I'd like to model that. To convey results that I have, or to convey findings, I can use a couple of different ways of communication. One of the nice things about my work is because it's all about fluid flow processes that I can visualize them. So I can show people computer simulations. I can show them pictures and pictures speak extremely loud, you know, almost louder than words and they're colorful and they look, they look fantastic. But the other way in which I, I have to convey what I learn um, to the teams I work with, to my students, to uh, policy makers that may want to fund my research, to companies that may want to fund my research, is in words. Writing stories is absolutely pivotal. If I can't write a good story, sell what I'm doing, make cases and arguments for continued funding, I'm nowhere. The other reason why I like writing so much, you know, it's essential for my work, but I also really like it because it helps me formulate my own thoughts. And sometimes, or very often, students don't think about this. You know, I always tell my graduate students or students in my classes, if you really want to understand something, either try to explain the concept to somebody else, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, orally, or write it down, write a story about it. See if you can get a good flow, if you have all the bits and pieces of this process in your head and you can write a really, really nice flow, flowing story with a good storyline that takes you from A to B. And then you show it to your friends or you show it to your mom or you show it to your, your partner and you say, does this make sense? Do you understand this now? And in this process of writing, I usually find understanding. Maybe you have this idea when you come into an engineering profession that all engineers like to think in formulas. This is how you did it in high school or in, the, in calculus in, in your freshman year or your sophomore year. Everything is a formula, so you work with mathematics. But there are actually a very large number of engineers and scientists who are visual thinkers. So they cannot understand something very well unless they can create a visual picture in their head. So it is certainly needed for me as an educator, but also as a science communicator or a team member. When, when I'm in a team with other engineers, I'm the mathematician, to be able to explain my thoughts both verbally, so maybe using formula, maybe using words as well as visually. So very often I combine the two. I create a picture, a visual of the process, and then I compose words to accompany that. So it's very seldom just one or the other. Every field, be it engineering or science, has its own language. And these languages are built up over quite some time and sometimes we refer to this as jargon. And of course, in my field in engineering, we also use jargon. There's nothing wrong with that. If I communicate with another colleague at a similar sort of level, and we're working on similar things, we communicate in jargon. It would be very hard for somebody 
uh, the general public to come in and listen to what we're saying. But that's because I'm communicating with that person. Jargon gets in the way tremendously when we're communicating with people that are not familiar with our field. So when you communicate with funders, with policymakers, with the general public to try to excite them about research, to try to show that we're really, as scientists and engineers, contributing to the greater good. Of course, you need to translate this in, in more of a you know, simple to understand language. And that's very, very hard for a lot of scientists and engineers, but I think that is because they never forced themselves to learn this. Sometimes stories are question creators, you know, it's never ending. Research is never a nicely encapsulated, complete piece of work that you can present. It's the full story with the beginning and the end, and the end says, and now they lived happily ever after. No, the end always says, now I have 10 more questions that I need to answer. Um, and so it's constantly changing, the story is constantly changing, the questions I ask are constantly changing. And of course, this is also extremely important because I need to know where to go next. You know, research is not something you do in a year and then it's over and done and you put it in a little book on, the, on your shelf and you never have to think about it again. You do things for decades. Uh, you're constantly thinking and evolving and asking other questions and writing is an integral part of that process.